So I was walking down the streets of New York City, the media news capital of America, and I was on my way, maybe thinking about getting a haircut, because I currently look like in sync. But it got me thinking about the difference between a barber and a journalist. This may seem like an odd comparison, but in reality, the barber has more rules and laws that he has to fulfill in order to be a barber than a journalist does in the United States. And part of the reason why, you know, I assume is because of the First Amendment, right? That's enshrined in our Bill of Rights. So journalists kind of get, you know, kind of get a free pass. Since the founding of this country, the First Amendment kind of says implicitly, there shall, no, <laughs> there shall not be any rules or regulations on journalists. A kind of, you know, libertarian experiment on one specific sector of the market. If you think of like, the, the capitalist market in the United States and all the various you know, sectors, whether it be engineering or mining or retail or journalism or barbershop, you know, haircutting, uh, the First Amendment makes media, press, a kind of libertarian idea in the United States, whereas even something as simple as maybe getting your hair cut and you know, what's the worst that happens? Okay, maybe they cut you a little bit, so you get a rubbish haircut like I have right now. You know, you have to take classes and pass a course and keep up to date you know, pay your little fees and taxes every time to be a barber, um, but you don't to be a journalist. You know, the barber isn't in the Bill of Rights. The barber was not so lucky as uh, journalists were. Journalists got the Bill of Rights, barbers got uh, a guild system <laughs> where you have to take a course and pay some money and then pass some things to make sure you're an adequate barber. And the argument, of course, for, for that in barber shopping, for instance, is to, to make sure there's a quality control. Uh, that when you walk into a barber shop, uh, the person knows what they're doing. They're going to be able to give you the haircut you want. Uh, they're not going to, you know, slice and dice your neck or your head. And I, I get that, right? But if we allow quality or enforce quality control to some level, a regulation upon haircutting, we don't do it for journalism. When in reality, a, f a press, an, an ability to reveal secrets about an individual to launch information into a wide public sphere can probably have more damage, at least reputationally, although I, I think I could argue that it has damage to you know, somebody's family, their spouse, their, their friends. I mean, even if we just look at the power of doxing on the internet and how dangerous of a thing that is, um, there's no real regulations to what there is to what there needs to be to be a journalist. It's somewhat self-regulating, right? Uh, you don't immediately get the keys to the castle if you want to work at the New York Times, usually you gotta have a few jobs before that. But there's no, you know, test that anybody's taking. There's no, you know, two year annual checkup, you know, what are the latest laws on, uh, on media or what are the, the code of ethics? You know, has this changed since 1850 or 1950? There's nothing explicitly said there. It's all kind of implicit, um, you know, gentleman's agreement in journalism, which is not true for, for not only most industries in the United States, but even barbers, you know, something as, as simple, but a good trade is barbarism. Barbarism, uh, sounds like barbaricism, as I don't know the right term, you guys help me out, you know what I'm trying to say. And so in reality, it's interesting because you can look at journalism and media as kind of a libertarian experiment in the United States. And that with the founding of the United States, they kind of said, you know, mm, all other industries will be regulated except for media. And so you've seen media evolve in a landscape where there's been no regulations. And I think it's pretty evident to anybody who lives in the United States that you get the best and both of both worlds, best and both of that world, which is one, you get really, really good reporting, you get tenacious reporters, you get information and leaks and all kinds of stuff that happens in the United States where people can say what they want and say what they mean. Um, and you get a lot of open discourse and dialogue in the United States. That's why a lot of British people end up in the United States, whether it be Milo Yiannopoulos or Christopher Hitchens, however you may feel about any of these people, or Craig Ferguson or Stephen Fry, the list goes on. A lot of British people, I think, like America's libertarian idea on freedom of speech. But the counterbalance to that is you get a lot of people trashed in the media, a lot of reports that turn out to be false. Uh, people just report on everything and get away with it, regardless if it's right or wrong at the end of the day. And so it's an interesting experiment into, into libertarian ideas because a lot of people who are libertarian will argue that like, oh, the market will self-regulate itself. The market will self-regulate itself. A little bit of a weird sentence there. And that like, there's no need to legislate something like barbershops because the barbers that suck, they'll go out of business because word of mouth will spread. And 
you know, the only the good barbers will last. And that's true, but there's always going to be a, a bumpiness there to, uh, you know, the, the poor fellow that winds up the wrong barber shop. And you see that in, in media and in press as new media companies come up and they go away. You know, they sometimes torch people along their journey as a company. Anyway, it's just something to think about. It's something to think about how media in the United States is probably, that I can think of, the most unregulated market in the United States, partially due because that's how it was enshrined in the Bill of Rights and the First Amendment. And part of the outgrowth of the First Amendment was to forever keep this part of the market, media, press, unregulated. Vice versa, everything else in the United States, which has at least some regulations. I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? What do you guys think? Let me know. Uh, you can watch around for another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe. 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 People even subscribe anymore. Subscribe, like, see you tomorrow.